Good evening, good evening. Shalom Baptist Church of Landover. Welcome to Midweek Service. We are glad that you are here to join us this evening. God is amazing. I don't know about you, Shiloh, but I praise and worship God every day for all the things that he has done for me and my family. Don't you feel like just praising and worshiping God right now? Thank you, God, for bringing us through another week. We are midway, but we are going to refill and get a word from God tonight that's going to take us through the rest of the week. Join me in the live chat with our Shiloh officers. Simple greetings to our pastor, our Shiloh disciples, and our guest visitors and friends right there at the bottom Click that share button and share this on all your social media platforms. Don't forget to join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to be reminded of the sermon from Sunday, also a replay of midweek services, and our weekly announcements. We know that prayer changes things, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited for the ministers and the deacons at Shiloh Baptist Church who are willing and able to pray for us. If you would like prayer, if you would like spiritual counsel, if you would like someone to talk to, go to our website at shilohbc.org forward slash spiritual support to fill out our spiritual support form to know our weekly prayer schedule, and just ask for those guidance that you need. There is someone willing and able to pray for you. Now we have come into our service where we all can participate in our giving. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over in all good measures. View our four ways of giving on your screen. You can visit our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give. You can send a text to the number on the screen. You can mail your gifts to the address on the screen. And that's selected date at that selected time. Stop by the church to drop off your love offering. Join me now as we recite our consecration of tithes and offerings. Dear Father, May thy love abound towards us as we now bring to thine altar this our gift. Help us that we may not give our money as a necessity, nor grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. We ask thy blessings in Jesus' name. 
after a selection from our music ministry, the next voice you will hear is a word from one of our ministerial staff. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord, until I die, I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm gonna treat everybody right until I die. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I'm gonna treat everybody right. Until I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Giving honor to God, who is head of my life. Giving honor to my pastor, the Reverend B. Lewis Colleton. Giving honor to all of the ministers that are here on the rostrum. Giving honor to all of you saints for being here this evening. And I, I left the best for last. Giving honor to my wife, Danelle Wilson Brown. I love you and I just adore you and God bless you. I greet all of you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Those that are able to stand, please stand for prayer and scripture. As we come to our feet, please find in your Bible, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses seven through nine. And please, we're going to put our finger there, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And as we place our finger there, we're going to go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise. We appreciate you, Lord, for bringing us through this day, blessing us, being a pavilion over our heads and a fence all around us, you brought us once again into the house of the Lord so that we might preach your word, hear your word, share your word, and grow from your word. Lord, please take me out of self and fill me with the Holy Spirit 
so that the preacher man might do your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, church, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 9. I will be reading from the New King James Version. New King James Version, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And it reads as thus, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn was, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of God. The title of my sermon, saints, is You're Stronger Than Your Thorn. You are stronger than your thorn. Amen. Point number one, everybody's got a thorn. Everybody's got a thorn. Point number two, thorns are useful. Thorns are useful. And point number three, God's grace and God's strength and your thorn. God's grace and God's strength and your thorn. This particular scripture is a reflection of many of our lives. The Apostle Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church in 56 AD. And Paul was detailing all of the spiritual privileges that he, Paul, had been granted. Paul was trying to blend the privilege of seeing and describing the third heaven, which is described as God's dwelling, with humility. Paul was trying to blend the abundance of the revelations, the fact that he, Paul, had spoken to kings and he had spoken to queens he had spoken to governors and the like. That he, Paul, had spoken in multiple languages, in multiple nations, and he was trying to blend that with humility of his own making. And yet Paul wanted the Corinthians of 56 AD to know then, and he wanted us to know now, that he was not exalted in his own mind. Why? Because Paul had a thorn in his side. And just like Paul, every one of us has a thorn in our sides. Just like Paul, we are all accomplished. Just like Paul, we've seen some great things. We've done some great things. We've been some great places. We've met great people. And all of that is quite noteworthy. God has blessed all of us with an abundance of the revelations. God has spoken to each and every one of us. That's part of the reason why we love him so. And for Paul and for us, that's where that thorn comes in. You see, saints, everybody's got a thorn. As accomplished as we are, no matter what person, place, or thing that has landed on our resumes, thank you, Jesus, we all have a thorn. I know my thorn, you know your thorn, and just like Paul, lest you and I be exalted above our measure by the abundance of our revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to each and every one of us. Now, there can be much discussion and much debate about the origin of the thorn, and Paul writes to this point in verse 7, where he says, his thorn 
in his opinion, was a messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. So Paul obviously does not like his thorn. You may not like yours. I know I don't like mine. But the larger point that we must get, saints, the greater point is that Paul was anointed with his thorn. You and I, beloved, we are anointed with our thorn to do the work of the Lord. Anointed folks have thorns, but they're still anointed. They're still covered in the blood of the lamb. They're still blessed and highly favored. They're still granted new grace and new mercies every morning. Anointed folks, every one of us, we've just got to deal with this thorn, but we must look at it the right way. Point number two, thorns are useful. We all have thorns. We all have that one particular imperfect thing that keeps us from getting to beside ourselves. That one thing that sticks in our side, never going anywhere, that helps to keep us humble. And that's a useful thing, actually a spiritual thing. Instead of God having to constantly remind each and every one of us that we're not all that, we've got our thorns still stuck in our side, reminding us of humility reminding us that we haven't arrived yet. And that's a good thing, that's a useful thing. It says that we have more work to do in God's vineyard, that we have more spiritual mouths to feed, remembering that the Lord told us that the poor will always be with you. Useful, because a humble saint is a praying saint, and a praying saint is an in touch with God saint. And an in touch with God saint is an action saint. And an action saint glorifies their father in heaven with their actions so that others may see their good works and join them in glorifying God in heaven. So thorns aren't pretty. They hurt at first, but they can help us keep everything in perspective. And saints, we might as well get used to that thorn because judging by verse eight, it's not going anywhere. Let's read verse eight. Concerning this thing, this is Paul speaking, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Now we all know Paul could pray. Oh, could he pray? He prayed the chains off in prison. He prayed entire early church communities back to spiritual health. Paul could send up a prayer. He was a praying man. And Paul prayed over his own thorn three times that God might take it away. And God left that thorn right where it spiritually was. But God did answer Paul's prayer, his multiple prayers. He not only had an answer, but he had a few points that he felt he had to make to Paul and to us as well. Let's look at God's points because they're principles that we need to read, understand, and absorb because they stand the test of time. Let's look at point three. Point number three, God's grace and God's strength and your thorn. In verse number nine, God speaks to Paul and to all of us, and he tells us exactly what we have to do and how we need to deal with this thorn so that we can be stronger with the thorn. Let's read verse nine. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Paul took God's answer so well. He took it to mean that his, his grace was sufficient and that he would be stronger even with the thorn in his side. God applied his grace and he added his strength in the mix so that day by day, God's grace and his strength are anointed upon us to perfect our imperfect weakness. This imputation of God's grace and God's strength is so effective for Paul that Paul wrote 10 books of the New Testament with his thorn. With his thorn, Paul wrote Galatians in 50 AD. He wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians in 56 AD. He wrote Colossians, Philemon, Ephesians, and Philippians in 61 AD. He wrote 1st Timothy in 62 AD. And he wrote 2nd Timothy and Titus in 66 AD with his thorn, hallelujah. The thorn in Paul did not affect the greater grace and the greater strength of Paul through the will of God placed in Paul's life. And likewise, God's grace and God's strength will work in your life just as significantly. And the beauty, the beauty of this transformation from focus on the thorn to the focus on God's grace and strength is realized by Paul in his next statement. I love this, I love this, hallelujah. Paul says, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, in conclusion, in summation, Paul is saying, I'm gonna boast of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. With humility, God made Paul stronger than his thorn. And with that same humility, God will make you stronger than your thorn. He'll make you stronger than your thorn. And he'll make me stronger than my thorn. Paul changed his focus from the thorn to the grace of God from the thorn to the strength of God, from the thorn to the power of Christ resting on him. And saints, once we change our focus from the thorn to God's grace and his strength and his power resting upon us, there's nothing left for us to do but to praise the Lord. We praise him for the thorn which leads us to praise him for the grace, which leads us to praise him for the strength, which leads us to praise him for the power of Christ resting upon us. We're gonna praise the Lord because we know that we're stronger than our thorn. Blessed with grace, touched by strength, and covered with the power of Christ, we are stronger than our thorns, hallelujah. And one more thing, then I'll take my seat. God told me to tell you, no matter how big your thorn is, no matter where you got your thorn, no matter what state your thorn is in right now that's stuck in your side, his grace, his strength, his power resting upon you can and will enable you to be stronger than your thorn strong enough to praise the Lord, strong enough to do his will in your life, strong enough to never again doubt that you are stronger than your thorn. Hallelujah, glory to God. We are covered in the blood of Jesus and we're stronger than our thorn. We're anointed and we're stronger than our thorn. We're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, and we're stronger than our thorn. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, 
from making us stronger than our thorn. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Won't you come? The doors of the church are open. Here at Shiloh Baptist Church, we would love for you to join us. We would love for you to fellowship with us. Now that you know and we know that you're stronger than your thorn, won't you come? Won't you come? God bless you. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for speaking through us and using us. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask that every family represented here take your word in, understand it, and be hearers and doers of the word. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. We love you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. The scripture tells us in Romans 10 and 9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you've been blessed by this powerful message. Apply God's word to your life so it can be a blessing to you, your friends, and your family. And as the scripture says, put your trust in God because he cares for you. Now, you have the opportunity to bless this preacher and this church with your offerings. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen. Or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday for Sunday school and Sunday worship service. Then, Join us each Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Until we meet again, always be blessed.